Happy Easter, everyone. This is Veda from Zephyr Lake Carmelite Mission. I just wanted to spend some time since I have not recorded any videos for more than 45 days. I wanted to just uh, share with you some of my Lenten experience and also wish you a happy Easter. Hope you all had a blessed Lent and enjoyed your Easter Sunday with your family and friends. Um, so this Lent, I had deliberately kind of set aside everything, all my engagements, all my Zoom meetings and other commitments to spend time in solitude uh, and as much as possible in silence and in prayer to discern and to allow and be present to God so that he can bring about the transformation that I've been expecting or praying for and hoping for and especially with respect to my prayer life and my fasting and the almsgiving. So the end of Lent and with Easter I can say I have definitely made good progress. I wouldn't say I have clarity on all respects 100% but definitely I have made a step in the right direction in all these three areas of prayer, of penance, almsgiving, as well as fasting. And I'd like to share some of the things that I experience. And usually I write down notes and I record multiple times, but I've decided I'm just going to do extempo, which means unscripted, off the cuff, and so bear with me if it is a little bit long, but um, I hope you will benefit from my experience. Um, and God was truly present. He guided my day every day. It was uh, like a going through a, a personal spiritual guidance from Jesus himself, you know. Every day had beautiful uh, insights but more than the insights I think personally I have grown this last 46 47 days um, so the first thing I'd like to share is that God revealed to me some of my own weaknesses you know my some of my tendencies and uh, he pointed to me things where I, where I need to change so that was something that I knew, but it came very clearly uh, as an example with respect to being patient, with being tender, with being uh, calm, you know, things like that, which are uh, sometimes, you know, comes naturally, but in other circumstances, they don't come naturally. So Jesus kind of pointed out to me through the scriptures as well as some of the other uh, experiences in my life this during this Lent, the importance of those virtues. So uh, some of the things he, uh, for our self-knowledge was that when we are persecuted, when we are harassed or when we are provoked, we must not get angry. The natural tendency is to get angry, but we should not. If you look at Jesus on the cross, you know, he had ultimate power, you know, he has this all-powerful God. But when he was being tortured, he didn't use his, all, his power, his divinity. He didn't use any of his divinity. He submitted himself to his persecutors. And he went through that crucifixion for us. But when we get offended or harmed, we immediately want to, like, you know, say God's justice on them, but no, that's not what God wants of us. God wants us to say what Jesus says, which is, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. So that was one. And also to, as far as possible, not impose our own way, you know, self-assertion and uh, kind of uh, trying to implement our own plans versus giving in to somebody else's likes rather than, you know, giving in to and always uh, 
insisting on our way kind of letting letting or giving in or giving room for other people's choices what they wish to do putting ourselves behind and of course with fasting we address the sin of gluttony you don't need a whole lot of food to survive and to live but we tend to give in to the tongue you know we want to be able to taste these delicious things there's nothing wrong with it but uh, we have to do in moderation so that we remain healthy especially as we get up in age we have to be careful what we eat so we can stay healthy without having to go on all kinds of medication for blood pressure and heart problems and diabetes and all those things so we have to be mod moderated and uh, we know it in our mind we want to do it but this lent i was actually able to do it because i think i kind of uh, did what jesus wanted me to do which is set aside and focus on him keeping him in in front every moment so then he gives the help and the strength the motivation to actually be able to do those things that we always wanted to or desired to and always you know we have to eliminate another thing that self with self knowledge that i learned was to eliminate every thought word and action which is not for the glory of god and to try to do that more in a more complete way and of course this is going to be a constant struggle we can not come to 100% perfection on this until we reach heaven but to make a conscious effort to eliminate every thought word and action which is not for god's glory and then the other thing that i said was to wait waiting and calm will save you that was from isaiah chapter 30 verse 15 and in quiet and being quiet and in trusting is where our strength lies we trust in god and we remain quiet not reactive waiting and in calm and in trust and in being quiet and you know we are going to win our victories victory over what victory over our own weaknesses you know our spiritual warfare is where we put a guard on our heart that we don't allow hatred negativity and sin into our heart and that's what we are talking about when we say victory we are talking about winning over the temptations of our our own weaknesses and every time as we said we pray you know god transforms us every time we open ourselves to god he transforms us in prayer and every time we open ourselves to god he transforms us so that we can keep our faith in him and to be able to overcome our temptations and our weaknesses and to actually develop a contempt for vain glory and for money and all those things you know things that worry us about what do we wear what do we eat what do we where do we live all those things you know having a contempt and kind of just resting and being quiet and trusting that god's going to provide for what we need when we need it and how we you know uh, how we should uh, receive those things he will show us everything as we trust in him and do our little bit of part of trusting and doing what we can and with respect to prayer you know there are so many good things out there that we can be engaged in but prayer is it, it is the crowning jewel of every every other activity because in prayer we are with our creator one with our creator and so we should shut all doors of distractions that take us away from prayer that take us away from our family life you know um and we should learn how to fast better how to share better we can do all that if we uh shut the doors to all the distractions that take us away from our prayer life and from our family life and 
if you are working obviously those uh, work commitments so our duty should be first and then we can serve others and we can interact with others and socialize but until we are at peace and we are doing the basics of our prayer life and our individual prayer life our community prayer life and our family life and our work we cannot truly give of ourselves to others who need of us and we have to forgive we have to forgive our family our friends and we have to let go we cannot hang on to hurts of the past another thing that came to me very strongly on easter sunday was jesus um you know pointing out to me how there are going to be malicious and wicked people in this world who will want to harm us especially those who are who are close to him because what happened to jesus you know he was the perfect he was perfection himself god himself but he was crucified and so there was this deep deep awareness or this deep uh, sense of i'm not sure how exactly to uh, joy deep deep in my heart on sunday easter day saying you actually have to rejoice and be happy when malicious and wicked people ha- harass you or reject you or you know torment you <laughs> or uh, try to cause you harm or you you should actually rejoice because that's when you're more like me what i went through and we should only be upset afraid or worried if we are doing something that that separates us from christ you know uh, but if we are being separated or if we are being harassed by people who are, have malicious intentions or wicked intentions we should actually rejoice because uh Jesus said that the world will hate you because you don't belong to this world you belong to God's kingdom not to this world not that everything in this world is bad but there are going to be some bad elements and we have to cu- uh, cultivate a heart a content heart a heart that is going to be content and satisfied with what we have and God promises that he will protect us as the eagle hovers over its nest and protects its little ones god himself will protect us you know he's going to protect us and he will make sure that nothing will disturb us and some of the things that also um that was pointed out to me in my prayer was that virtue you know the practice of virtue will produce a certain mildness a certain peace a certain comfort a tenderness in us and a light and a purity and a strength and inner strength and that comes from god himself and this urge to be of help to others uh, and to disregard what other people think of us and to avoid you know those conversations and those areas where we are going to be challenged in terms of our peace and for us to um uh, avoid situations that will make us react poorly you know and uh, pay more attention to our inner self rather than to the outsides and what others think of us and to always be calm to always be compassionate to always be tender and warm hearted and to always have this great determination to do good and to be good the only time we should be ashamed of ourselves or we should be upset about ourselves is if we allow sin in our heart you know if we allow hatred in our heart for others or if we allow you know negativity that's when we should be sad other times if we don't allow the those negative hatred uh, those kind of things into our heart we can be always proud of ourselves what we what we do so we have to keep all this in 
things in perspective when we are interacting, when we plan our day and how we live our life. And of course, we have to spend time in meditation and prayer. That's most important. And we should develop friendships that where we can trust and who can trust us. You know, we have to have those good friends so that we're not always just self self-absorption is bad too. And we should, um, some of the other things that uh, was also um, shared with me or the insights that I received was that if we have inordinate attachments, we are going to be tormented, we're going to be tired, we're going to be weary, we're going to feel weak, we're going to have blindness, all these things. But if we focus our attention on God and God alone, we are going to experience the mildness, the tenderness, the peace, the comfort, the strength, and the determination to do good. And also during this whole Lent, I have been um, led by Christ to watch some programs on TV, uh, as well as on the internet, that gave me more um, insight into the different religions of the world, you know, world religions. Even though I'm from India, I've, expo I've been exposed to so many religions, but Jesus still wanted me to learn more and to learn from people who practice the other faith. Like I watched um, Dalai Lama who gave talks on Buddhism. And then I watched um, a program on B BBC that uh, shared about the religions of India, which is Hinduism predominantly. And then I saw some Protestant programs and uh, Muslim programs. I saw the visit of Pope Francis to uh, the Ayatollah uh, Sistani, his house. And I saw how humble he was, how he lived humbly, such an austere life. And then, you know, Dalai Lama, such a simple, loving heart. And I've been watching many of the uh, orthodox programs, listening to many of the chants by the Armenians. They always captured my heart. So kind of, you know, to see there are so many good things in all the religions of this world. And, uh, you know, the thing then that sets apart, I think, uh, uh, the Christian religion or the cr Christianity is that all the religions are, you know, man's attempts where we are attempting to find God. But in Christianity, Christ, he came, he came down, you know, he came down from heaven. He is the word of God. Um, and that's what we believe. And of course, um, we are not saying that uh, others uh, uh, who don't believe that will not be saved but what we are saying is that that is what Christians believe is that you know all people have this urge for God and we are all trying to understand and come to in union with God and that's why Christ came to be united with us so that he became man so that by our union with him through him we get united to God so we become one with Christ we become one person with Christ. And as Christ is already united with God, the Father, through him we get united. Because nothing unholy can be united with God. And as human beings, because of the fall of Adam and Eve, we all have this uh, original sin. And in baptism, we get grafted on to Christ so that we become united with God. So that's our belief. So that's what I went through. You can say a, a struggle, a spiritual struggle, or you can say just um, a spiritual thought process for several days, so a few days during Lent, uh, when I was looking at all these different programs, even also the Jewish faith as well. You know, In fact, we even celebrated um, the Seder meal I watched the White House celebration of the Seder meal as well. So, um, but this is the difference that you know Christ kind of pointed out to me was, is that 
I came to you so that, you know, that is what's uh, the, the key point with Christianity. And further, what did I do? I had several moments where the scripture just came alive. Many days I would pray and I would open the Bible to get a passage for my meditation and it would be right on point for either it would be the scripture passage for that day itself or it was right on point for what I was praying for. And so, uh, you know, the living word of God, this written manifestation of the word of God, which is Jesus Christ, came alive during this Lent for me. And um, I, there is so much I would love to share. And uh, the, there was this uh, moment when I had this meditation on palm trees and palm trees, uh, you know, which we see during Palm Sunday, where uh, when Jesus enters into Jerusalem, uh, the people put olive branches and palm leaves on the ground so that Jesus goes over that. And it's a symbol of victory, the symbol of victory of the spirit over the flesh. And it is a sign of life in unsurvivable environment. So in this world, you know, there's uh, so many temptations, you know, so many things that can take us in all different directions. But if we keep our focus on God, we will be able, able to overcome those things. We will be able to enter eternal life with Christ. We can be a martyr. Martyr meaning dying to the things of this world and being alive and present to the things of it, the eternal value. We can do that. Not just the priests, the monks, uh, and the religious, just ordinary people like you and me lay people, we can overcome as well because Christ has overcome death and sin through him, through the strength and grace that he gives us, we can overcome our temptations and our limitations and lead holy lives while we are still here on this earth. We die with him in baptism and we are living a new life, an eternal life already here on earth. And the palm trees are symbols of this victory. And that came in a very strong way for me during this Lent as I was praying and meditating. And um, so I think that's pretty much all I wanted to share. I'm sure you all had also a beautiful, very beautiful Lent and a beautiful Easter. Um, always remember that when faced with difficulties, when faced with negativity, when faced with wickedness and maliciousness, let us all react like Christ does, which is to say, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do and not get upset, not get afraid or not get anxious, but rather to rejoice and to be glad saying, oh, I'm being treated like Christ. And so we should rejoice and be happy and we should always learn how to be content, satisfied, and uh, putting the other person, other person's wishes n before our wishes and uh, adapting. And it's a lifelong challenge to do this. But I feel this land, uh, God has transformed me. So I've taken one step closer to be able to do those things, maybe a little bit better than I was before 45 days ago. So that has been my experience. And with that, I want to wish you all again a happy Easter. And as we know, the Easter season goes on until Pentecost when we receive the Holy Spirit. And of course, this week, Catholics, we are praying the Novena of the Divine Mercy Novena, uh, where we will be celebrating the Divine Mercy Sunday, coming Sunday. So. That's what I'm looking forward to now. And I wish you all a wonderful Divine Mercy Sunday as well. And my next set of videos will be on the phase, three, uh, phase two, part two, which is the third year of formation for the Lake Carmelites. 
so that's what I will be working on uh, maybe I will have my first video you know in a few days definitely not more than 10 days from now so have a wonderful day and thank you for watching